Hi, I'm Greg Wells. Welcome to my studio, Rocket Carousel Studio in Los Angeles. I am very excited to be talking about a new plugin, the Waves voice-centric plugin that I have designed with them. The original idea behind this plugin was to help songwriters and people recording at home to quickly get like an A-level, world-class mixed vocal sound. And I'm hoping that a lot of pros can use it as well. It really is the highest level of what Waves plugins can do. I've been recording and mixing vocals for 15 to 20 years. Somewhere around the 15 year mark, 15 years ago, early 2000s, I came upon this particular path, vocal path, vocal chain, that just really works for me. And I use it every day. And I always thought it would be great to have all of it in one spot, rather than you know a bunch of different plugins that get me there. And I can just kind of open it and within literally five seconds, get the, the sound that I'm looking for. My vision behind the Waves voice-centric plugin was an idea that's been kicking around in my head for at least five years. I have had so many people ask me, uh, a lot of the times it's been assistants or interns here at my studio that are often, you know, have a home, uh, like a laptop, and they're trying to record vocals and they're trying to make it sound like a record, whatever that means. It means something to all of us. And they would say, how do I do it? Like, what do I need? What do I need to get? And, and the beginning of the idea was me thinking, well, maybe I should build like a hardware box. Maybe I should build a, a thing that you plug the mic into and you record it that way. And I looked at that for about six months and realized it was just so complicated. And so I let that go. And then I started thinking, wait a second, this should be a plug-in. I mean, clearly we're in a digital world at this point, even though I'm surrounded by analog gear, but the sound of it, is very, you know, reminiscent of what the analog gear does. There's uh, two different compressors inside of it. Uh, there's a really beautiful EQ inside. Um, it also has uh, my favorite three vocal effects, which are easy to toggle on or off. And then you just, there's a little dial where you add as much as you want. I put a, a cap on the volume amount, but it's still, I think it's more than you'll ever need. And it's my favorite delay effect. It's like a sort of a kind of memory man, rolled off, slightly lo-fi ping pong delay. Brought in a little bit. It's not hard left and right. It's a bit more like that. And uh, my favorite doubling effect. And, uh, and just a nice dark plate reverb, which I always find really helpful on vocals. I don't like a really sibilant sounding reverb. And that's it. It's those three things. And then the big knob, the intensity knob. Um, that's how it works. I love the idea of not getting bogged down in, oh, what does this do? Oh, well, what does this little thing do? Like, forget all of that. There is a knob that does go from zero to 100. That doesn't mean everything goes from zero to 100. There's all kinds of things happening with that knob where some things don't even turn on until 80%. Other things turn on at 60%. Some things shut off after 40%. It does all these different things. Uh, the look of the plugin, I didn't want it to look too ornate or complicated. Again, I really like stuff that doesn't distract from the thing that I'm trying to do, which is hopefully trying to make music that's not crap. Um, and I just wanted it to be very obvious and easy to look at and then be able to put it away and just stay on the music. And I just find blue kind of a, it's blue, it's a great color. Uh, it's designed for lead vocals and background vocals. Uh, I have found Background vocals usually sound better with a bit more juice on them, a little more compression, because they're usually much quieter than the lead vocal, and you kind of want them to be present, be heard, but not overtake, not jump out. Um, so I would recommend cranking the intensity knob almost all the way, or all the way on background vocals. And then the lead vocal's different, because it's so much louder in the mix, and you just find the sweet spot for it. Another thing I've been doing with the plug-in is... And it's very easy to do. You, you automate where the intensity knob goes. It does a lot. And automation can help you kind of manage, you know, sort of mix the vocal within the plugin uh, and keep it all just in the, uh, on the vocal track. 
I used to run plugins on an aux track. I still will if it's just a dedicated reverb or a dedicated delay that I want to send a bunch of different things to. But with this plugin, it was designed to put it straight on the vocal. And, uh, you know, you may want to add some effects before or after, but it, it might be, it should be all you need to get a really just great sounding vocal over a track. The voice centric plugin is not genre specific. It would sound great on hip hop to rock to pop, any kind of modern, um, again, I will say sort of music, probably with drums, you know, uh, when vocals don't have to compete with rhythm instruments, if it's a big open track, then you don't necessarily need much on the vocal. You can just almost run it as it was recorded. But once you head down the road of like a more mixy kind of environment, that's what it's designed for. I mean, all I ever know when I'm making music is if it feels right to me or not. That's the only thing I have. There's no rule book. And I know that if I get that feeling here in, in this control room, that it will travel outside of the control room. If I don't have that feeling, it has no life. <laughs>